Hello everybody, this is Donna Lewis with the Clark County Park District. And today I'm bringing to you Crow Reading in Nature again. Now, hopefully you've already looked at the book. I kept them separate today so you can look at the book and then watch the program whenever you want. So I read Wide Mouth Frog a while back, so I just reshared that video because I barely got through it the first time without laughing at myself. So today we're gonna talk about some fantastic frogs from Ohio. And before I get started, I heard that the wide mouth frog is one of my friend's kids' favorite. So I'm gonna give a shout out to Rosie, Ellie, and Hattie today. So I heard that you guys watch our book nook videos. So hopefully you'll tune in today to this video. All right, now their mom loves frogs and other relatives of the frog. And I do too, she knows a lot more. And you'll get to see her here soon on one of our virtual um, lessons. So we're gonna start with, and we're gonna talk first about amphibians in general. So amphibians, hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna read it and then show you. So the amphibians are a class of animals like birds or mammals or reptiles. It's a way that we group them together, it's their class. So. They live part of their lives in the water. So usually they begin as eggs in the water or moist soil, somewhere moist, and then they live on land. Now, if you look at a frog, okay, or a toad, well, toads do, really, mostly. You know, you see them hopping around in the woods in your backyard. But frogs are going to spend a lot of their time in the water. But so they live in the water and on the land. So amphibians are pretty cool lay their eggs in a moist area, and then they can live either in the water or in land. Now, they start out as an egg, okay, and they go through something called metamorphosis. So, I'm going to show you this little diagram. It's not the best, but... So, they start out as a tadpole, oh, a little bright, okay, a tadpole, okay, they start to get legs, they're called a polywog. Then, okay, so they have a tadpole with a tail and gills, becomes a tadpole with two legs, a tadpole with four legs and a long tail, a froglet with a short tail, and then a full grown frog. So this is called a metamorphosis. The butterfly goes through a metamorphosis, okay? Many um, animals, we don't think about it, but they do, so like the um, dragonfly. So, this is kind of how you might see eggs in the water in a pond. So if you see something like this, you don't want to disturb it. These are little frog eggs. They're clear, they're jelly-like, and you can see through them, right? You can see the little embryos inside. So they'd be sitting in the water, okay? You'd see, like, what is that ball of, like, mucus, all right? So then you, they hatch and they become a tadpole. All right, so these big tadpoles might be the green frog tadpole, okay? So, or maybe bullfrogs. So first they've got a tadpole. They've got gills to breathe underwater and they're plant eaters at this time, okay? This little guy swimming around is a plant eater. Now, he has to worry about some big predators in there, so he needs to be able to camouflage and hide from things like dragonflies, fish, snakes, and turtles, okay? So he has to try to hide to protect himself. Then he's going to start getting his legs, okay? He'll be a polywog. Then he'll get more legs. So he still has this long tail, okay? Now this is just a model, so, you know, might look a little different in the wild. Then eventually he loses that tail and becomes a frog, okay? Or a toad, all right? So today we're gonna to talk about frogs. We'll briefly talk about toads because they're very closely related, right? But then he becomes what? What does he eat after that? He ate plants when he was little, okay, when he was real little, but then he eats meat, right? Flies, worms, spiders, things like that. So all amphibians go through a type of metamorphosis, okay? So I'm going to let you look at that word, okay? So that's my little chart there. I can't read it now like this because it's backwards to me. <laughs> so Frogs, we're gonna mostly focus on, we're focusing on frogs today, okay? But amphibians in general, they have thin, moist skin. 
So their skin is very sensitive. So when you, this is like a green frog, okay? So when you see them on the pond, if there's like pollution in the pond, if there's something in the pond that ran into the pond that could hurt them, they'll be the first to, one of the first species to show signs of um, pollution in the water because they're an indicator species. They're very um, susceptible to pollution because their water, they can, their skin, they can kind of breathe through their skin, okay? So they pass things through their skin. So it's very sensitive. Things like frogs and um, salamanders, they're indicator species. So they have thin, moist skin. Um, and they do shed their skin like a snake, okay? They'll shed their whole skin. A lot of times they'll eat it for nutrients. Gross, all right? Um, they lay eggs in water like we talked about, okay? So they lay eggs in the water or moist areas, okay? Cold-blooded, okay? We're warm-blooded, so we can control our temperature within our bodies. Our body does that for us. These guys are cold-blooded or ectothermic. They get their heat source from the outside, so they're going to soak up the heat from the sun or they're going to get on a warm surface. So they're going to take on the temperature of their surroundings. And that's why they can't live outside during the winter. So they're going to start coming out now. Um, some amphibians have already come out. Um, they live in a variety of habitats. So you can find them in your backyard. Um, you can find them in your at your rivers and your creeks and your lakes. Um, around farm fields, prairies, they're everywhere, all right? They live in neighborhoods just fine, right? So you can find them everywhere. Now, this guy you'll find a lot in in the water, all right? So if you see heads peeking out of the lake, they're kind of like this. You just see about that much sometimes. It's um, a lot of times the green frogs poking their heads out of the water. Now, if you go to our prairie, you can see something called the leopard frog, and we're going to talk about that in a minute. Now, there's also gray tree frogs at our wetlands and near our prairie, and I'm sure at the park as well, and I have them behind my house. I can hear them in the spring. So, live in a variety of habitats, and they're carnivores like we talked about, okay? They eat other um, animals. So, if they found, now this is an exotic frog, right? But if they saw a, a small frog that they could eat, they'll eat it, all right? So, they're not picky. They're going to eat uh, things that are smaller than them. So these big guys might eat fish, you know, small um, minnows and stuff. All right, and they're vertebrates. So what does it mean to be a vertebrate? Well, if you feel back here, you've got a backbone. And frogs have a backbone. They're not like an insect that has an exoskeleton. They're vertebrates. They're skeletons inside. So um, amphibians and reptiles are vertebrates. A lot of times we think of amphibians as um, like reptiles and there's differences. So later on in one of my videos, later on um, we'll do something on snakes and we're going to talk about some reptiles. So, but they are vertebrates. So they do have a backbone. All right. Um, so this is what we just talked about. It's my nice handy whiteboard. Okay. So I don't forget what to tell you. So now we're gonna talk about some of the frogs live in Ohio. We have about 15 species that live in Ohio. Pretty cool. Um, and we have a lot of studies that have been done by university professors and people in the field, you know, scientists that have gone out and studied our salamanders and amphibians so that they can give us um, some good information and, and we can see how they're doing. So I'm gonna talk about some of, I'm gonna use my handy dandy iPad here. And we're going to talk about, okay, the sounds of frogs. Okay, so I'm going to show you some pictures and, oh, here we go. I couldn't find my sounds. Okay, so calls of frogs. All right, so this is what happens when you have too much open on your iPad. All right, so the first one we're going to talk about, this is one of the earliest, okay? Spring peeper. Okay, the sun is messing with my picture. I got sun coming in through the window. Okay, so this is the spring peeper. All right, so the spring peeper, let's listen to its sound. Now, I'm going to credit this sound. I found this site called musicofnature.com. So you can find these sounds on your own, okay? Can you hear that? Okay, so it's the spring peeper. These guys are super small. 
but they have a really loud sound. So sometimes if you go to an area like our wetland here soon, you're gonna hear a cacophony of sound, okay? A lot of sound from these guys. All right, so it's a peep that rises slightly in pitch from beginning to end, a loud piercing call. Distant choruses sound like this, the jingling of sleigh bells. That's pretty cool. Okay, so here's the wood frog. Now, I don't think we're gonna see these around our area. Spring peepers, yes. Wood frog, boy, the sun is messed. There we go. Okay, spring peeper and then wood frog. Wood frog, not normally. So I'm gonna skip his sound. The leopard frog, okay. Now, the leopard frog, I've seen these guys just kind of having a party together in early April at our wetland, all right? Just tons of them. So there is their time to mate. Now, so a lot of times when these frogs call, it's their mating call or territorial call. Um, now, the leopard frog, let's hear his sound. You guys hear that? Reminds me of like one of the dinosaurs on Jurassic Park. Those little evil ones. <laughs> These are super cool to see. The thing about leopard frogs, they're really fast. Oh, and that sound in the background was my dog. Whoa. Hopefully you guys can hear that good. So the northern leopard frog. So where can you see that around the area? So if you walk in our prairie... Um, hold on just a second. I'm at home today and I have a dog getting into my stuff. So if you walk on our prairie, the Lettingham Prairie off Spangler Road, and um, you go to, you start walking towards the back in the wet area, the leopard frogs, if it's wet back there, which it usually is, so wear waders, they'll just be jumping all over the place in front of you. So better to observe them than try to catch them, okay? Um, if you have a net, that might, would be a better way to catch them. But, um, and if you do that, just take a quick look and let them go because they've got things to do out there, right? But they're pretty cool. And why are they called a leopard frog? Because they have spots similar to a leopard. That's how they got their name. Spring peepers, well, they make a peep sound, lots of peeps, right? So usually you can, um, usually the animal's named by what it looks like or how it sounds. So let's look at the American toad. Now, not a frog, but very closely related to the frog, right? So let's see if I can get the picture. You guys can see it. The sun is not my friend today. Okay, so you guys know what a toad looks like, right? So let's listen to its sound. It's a long musical trill lasting for five to 30 seconds. Very pretty, isn't it? So a lot of you could probably hear toads behind your house, okay? So a lot of us have toads behind us. All right, so the American toad. Let's do the gray tree frog. Now the gray tree frog, um, we've seen them at um, the wetland, Estill Winrick wetlands. And um, so at the edge, edge of the prairie, um, Lettingham Prairie and in the Estill Winrick Wetlands. And um, I have these somewhere behind me because we're very wet out here where I live. So um, I hear this in the spring. So it says, the advertisement call, like, hey, ladies, here I am, okay, is a melodious trill lasting about half a second and repeated every few seconds. And you can hear another frog in the background. Isn't that pretty? So the, the toad and the gray tree frog remind me of each other. Okay, so this is the gray tree frog. This sun, okay, let me see if I can get the sun blocked. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to move the phone a minute. But, huh. Well. It's not my friend today. Let's see if I can do this. There we go. Okay, so where's he at? 
Okay, gray tree frog, right there. You see him? So, they have a um, greenish gray color on their back. Sorry, user error there. They have a greenish gray color on their back. They have this bright yellow in like between their back of their stomach and their legs and the yellow on their stomach. Bright yellow. Pretty cool frog that we have in Ohio. So we think that the only cool ones are like this guy, okay? He's the Rainforest Cafe frog, right? The red-eyed tree frog. We have a tree frog too, okay? The gray tree frog. There's also the Copes gray tree frog, but not in our area. But what a super cool animal. They can stick to the trees with those sticky pads on their feet. They're really neat. So um, we have really cool species in Ohio. So, okay, what about the green frog? This guy is really common, okay? Oh, we can see him. So the green frog is like this guy, similar to the bullfrog, okay? But I think he's more common. Let's listen to his call. I think they're trying to start a band. That's what I think. So, explosive, throaty, gunk. Pretty unattractive, but you could probably tell what it is, right? That is a crazy sound. Okay, so that is the green tree frog. Now, the bullfrog, which is similar to the tree frog, or the green frog. I'm going to listen to his call real quick. That's kind of crazy, too. So that's the bullfrog. Um, and let's see. I think that would be about it. Let's see. Well, we have the, the chorus frog. We'll listen to the chorus frog, because we do get chorus frogs. That's a pretty cool sound. So again, you can go to musicofnature.com and learn some of your frog sounds, because pretty soon... As it starts getting warmer, you're going to hear maybe the peepers and the gray tree frogs. Isn't that neat? Okay, so how can you simulate some of their songs? Oh, let me show you a picture of the... That is the chorus frog. Okay, let me get that right. Oh, I can't, I can't win today. Oh, there we go. Okay. So, again, you can see pictures much better than over the camera. Um... And hear their sounds on musicofnature.com. And there's other sites. Um, a lot of sites out there with their songs. So this, did I do the wood frog? Northern, okay. I don't think I did the wood frog. But you can simulate some, simulate some of the sounds. And I'm just going to do this one. This is like the chorus frog. Now you can take, I, I didn't have marbles. But you can take marbles. If you guys can hear that. and simulate their sound. I think now my friend is going to correct me on this. Oh, I think this is the wood frog. Okay, so we do get wood frogs. I should probably play a sound. Oh my, that's crazy. Not in our area, but that sounds like some different creature from another planet talking to each other. So animals have some crazy sounds. All right, let's, okay. So there was one animal that supposedly sound like comb, like running your fingers on a comb. But I'm gonna do this. Supposedly this sounds like a leopard frog a little bit. So let's do this. A little bit, let's play the leopard frog sound. Oh, if you do it right. A little bit. So if you take a balloon and run your finger on it, I think better, I read that it's a wet finger, but I think a dry finger is better. You can kind of make that sound. So you guys can try that on your own and you can look up frog sounds and how to make some frog sounds, okay? So what I want you to do as it gets warmer, this is your homework, okay? As it gets warmer, and hopefully it's gonna happen soon, it is March, okay, let's remind the weather. Um, we're gonna start hearing these frogs out there. 
We can also start to see them or see signs of them or hear them jump into the water as we go by. They're not just gonna sit there and let us do whatever, right? So what I want you to do is start listening for some frogs. Try to learn some of those frog sounds and go outside. It's a great activity to do with your family and see if you can hear some frogs. Now, another thing, there's a great craft that'll be online tomorrow. It's on YouTube right now, but it is going to be on share, uh, shared on Facebook tomorrow, and it's Cool Crafts with Bailey, and she's making a frog. So paper plate, paper, paint, or markers. So get ready for that fun craft. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. Again, don't forget to watch the Wide Mouth Frog video that I did. Um, that'll be shared before that sh was shared before this. So make sure you watch that and get out and get outside and just learn about what lives right in your backyard and come out to the park and have a great time learning about nature. Okay, thank you. Till next time. Bye bye.